Good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Malcolm Waira. Thank you for joining us. Following the historic first sale of Kumul Petroleum Holdings Limited's share of production from the PNG LNG project, the state-owned oil and gas company signed a memorandum of understanding last night with the buyer, China's national oil company, PetroChina. After witnessing the loading of KPHL's first LNG cargo yesterday afternoon onto PetroChina's vessel Wudang at the PNG LNG plant site in Koshen Bay in Napa Napa, Central Province, the delegates from the PNG government, KPHL and PetroChina proceeded on to signing the MOU later in the evening. KPHL Managing Director Wapu Song said since exporting oil in 1991, PNG has never sold oil itself until yesterday. Thus, it is a milestone achievement for the country. So I'm very happy with, with what we have been able to achieve at this, at this point. It's taken us 14 years as a company, 2010, from a self-company to now uh, what we are today. Song said the deal is to sell 144,000 cubic meters of liquefied natural gas on a free on board terms to Petro China, and he thanked the company for agreeing to do business with KPHL. He further said it is not easy to get in such business, and he thanked the staff of KPHL and the Prime Minister and NEC for their support in making it possible for KPHL to sell its share of LNG product. That, that MOU has upstream, midstream, downstream uh, energy business um, also has, has uh, carbon offset projects and opportunities that we want to look at together. So I'm very, very happy. Prime Minister James Marape said this officially marks the entry of PetroChina into the market in PNG, following after other oil and gas giants such as ExxonMobil, Santos and Total Energies. He said the entry of Petro China was a result of his visit to Singapore last month to address the fuel shortage crisis. We cannot be forever locked in chains under monopolistic arrangement. We need to look for alternate. And uh, uh, the local embassy here, as well as Beijing, had a special distress call out to Petro China to step in to see how best they will come in, not just. Uh, in this current business transaction that we are getting upon uh, with Kumul. Uh, Marape assured Petro China that PNG has a robust economy and having them in the country along with other super major oil and gas companies will create the opportunity for downstream processing. Edson Kuso, National MTV News. With the entry of China's national oil company PetroChina into the market after the signing of the MOU last night between KPHL and PetroChina, Prime Minister James Marape said it is now time for the oil and gas giants operating in the country to seriously look at downstream processing of oil and gas in the country for domestic use. Marape said as Prime Minister, his aspiration is to see Papua New Guinea's resources are processed in the country. I cannot live through a life in me uh, seeing that we are producing oil and gas, but our own oil and gas cannot supply our, our domestic needs. We must find solutions. I just want to encourage uh, both ExxonMobil and Total as the lead uh, companies in PNG LNG and Papua LNG. He said with respect to the PNG LNG project, it was a foundation project, hence the government did not demand for downstreaming in the country. However, they have already secured debt for the Papua LNG project. Uh, the Papua LNG is 5% for DMO is secured. We want to use this to ensure we prop up and start a robust downstream uh, processing sector in the, in the hydrocarbon space, hopefully in time replace fuel import from outside, have enough fuel bunkering and fuel storage in our country. And I want to encourage PetroChina and in partnership with Kumul to look into this space and embrace my learners with you through MRDC so that the three of you can fill in this gap. In welcoming PetroChina into the country, Prime Minister Marape gave assurance that the state will be working closely with them. I offer you Kumul Petroleum and MRDC for a detailed partnership into the downstream processing sector space. And in time, I want to replace importation of fuel. And I want to produce fuel in this country so that we could supply a local market, supply Pacific, 
and also hopefully supply out to East and North Asia and the market around us. PetroChina International Corporation is China's national oil company and is a top 50 company in the globe. And it is also the biggest supplier of oil and gas in Asia. Edson Kuso, National MTV News. The National Procurement Commission has witnessed the swearing-in of its new board members today in Port Mosby. In attendance was the Minister for Finance, Renbo Paita, and other invited guests. The swearing-in and commissioning of a total of seven new board members were witnessed by Council Wesley Biggie. They started with the Secretary of the Department of Finance, Samuel Penias, as Chairman of National Procurement Commission, State Solicitor Daniel Rolfa Garea, Department of Works and Highway Secretary David Wera, Representative from the Institute of Engineers, PNG, Adea Bauraga, Representatives of accountants, James Popogore, independent member mostly Ellie, and representative of civil society and churches, Reverend Roger Joseph. We have a full board member in the room. By reading their credentials and knowing their credentials, you can see the level of um, credibility that we contribute to the uh, Upon congratulating the new board members, Minister for Finance, Renbo Paita, expressed his gratitude towards the former board members. And, uh, I place on record my sincere uh, thank you. I know it has been challenging. They must have gone through a lot of issues, you know, when we took government and there were a new board coming in. Minister Paita emphasized on the selection process. Just looking at your credentials, I think it's one of the uh, best board members we've ever uh, appointed and and I think it should be placed on record that this is my second time to choose uh, a woman from, uh, from that uh, Institute of Engineers. And now Mrs. Uh, Boraga brings to the same uh, value and credentials that we wanted to have on that board. Chairman of NPC Samuel Penias gave his statement as well. Our mission is to excel, to deliver exceptional value to the people of this country through sound and strategic procurement process. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. Minister for Finance, Renbo Paita, says major reforms are expected to happen in the National Procurement Commission. The finance minister was adamant in his statement, highlighting the importance of having major reforms in the commission. Including one, increasing thresholds floor board members so that we don't really give all the work to NEC. Maybe for districts we can go from 5 to 10, from provinces we can go from 10 to 20, and NPC from 20 to 30, and NEC can come without just below uh, putting everything to NEC and cabinet. We have a lot of meetings and then sometimes we don't give priority to expenditure, things like contracts. So those are some of the reforms that I want to drive with CEO and chairman and your board. He also emphasized on the digitalized procurement, stating that having a system protocol in place is vital. Digital procurement. Uh, you know, all of you are from Papua New Guinea, so you understand. They'll say, oh, this is lunch money, that lunch money, nah. that lunch money too is a big cost to contractors to huh? So one, do we make it digital so that people don't have to meet and this and a system is in place to approve projects and contracts and going up so that we can make decisions without being coerced or a pressure or whatever so that the system protects both you board members and me as minister and the cabinet as well. So that's something I've asked CEO to look at. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. The Catholic Bishops Conference of Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands has confirmed the visit of Pope Francis to Papua New Guinea on the 6th to the 9th of September this year. They made this announcement today in a press conference at the Catholic Bishops Conference in Port Mosby. The president of the Catholic Bishops Conference of PNG and Solomon Islands and Bishop of Berena, Most Reverend Bishop Otto Separi, stated that they have received an official announcement from the Vatican recently on the 12th of April, confirming the visit of Pope Francis to PNG. 
Most Reverend Bishop Otto Sapari indicated that the Pope will visit PNG as a state leader and also as a pastoral or spiritual leader. He's coming as a spiritual leader and coming to visit Papua New Guinea. Of course, he has time to speak with the political leaders of our country. He's going to speak to the spiritual leaders of our country, the bishops, the priests, and religious. He's going to meet the prime minister and the minister of the cabinet. So he comes to bring peace to us. He comes to bring God's graces and blessings to us. The bishop further inviting other churches in Papua New Guinea to be part of this special occasion. He said PNG have different denomination, but we all believe in one God. So this invitation goes to all the people of Papua New Guinea, despite of which church you are belong to. So we welcome, looking forward to welcome our Pope, our spiritual leader coming to us. And it's not excluded only for the Catholics. It's for all the people of Papua New Guinea. Sharing on the same sentiments, the Archbishop of Port Mosby, His Eminence Sir John Cardinal Ribat, wants every citizens of this country to be united to receive Pope Francis. This is an important moment for us to prepare. And uh, because of his entrance to our nation, it is through Port Mosby. And therefore, we have to ensure that this visit is memorable, not only for him, but also for all of us. The Archbishop also reiterated on a statement made by Pope Francis when all the bishops from PNG and Solomon Islands visited Rome last year in May. Last, and of course he knew. That's why he said, my heart goes to the peripheries, to those who are really far away, and those who are really kind of yeah, neglected in a way. And so neglected in a way that covers many things. He further stated that Pope Francis is a spiritual leader, a state leader, and he is a leader for everyone, and he speaks for the good of humanity. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. Meanwhile, it was also announced today that the 87-year-old head of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, will visit Vanimo during his state visit to the country in September. The tentative program suggested that the Pope will visit the province on the 8th of September on a Sunday. Thank you, Bishop Thank you, Jessica. When revealing the plan and tentative program for the visit of the Pope, the chairperson of the Papal Visit Committee and Bishop of Lay, Most Reverend Bishop Rosario Menezes, announced that Pope Francis will visit Vanimo. And that he is also going to Vanimo. Uh, he will depart from here around uh, 2 o'clock in, in the afternoon. And then he will meet uh, all the missionaries, priests, religious, uh, and then uh, the lay people, catechists, and young people. And uh, uh, or, uh, the sisters are uh, or, uh, running some orphanages. So he will meet with all these people in one location. Uh, at, uh, at a parish called Baro, and then uh, the same evening he will return. The Bishop of Vanimo Diocese, Most Reverend Bishop Francis Melly, indicated the reason of Pope's visit to Vanimo. Pope always speaks about the periphery, the remotest part of the nation of or part of the country. Banimo is, is regarded as one of the periphery. And in, in fact, Banimo is, is one of disadvantages in many ways and in many services. Bishop of Vanimo further appealed to Christians to pray for the safe travel of the Pope in his visitation around the world and to Papua New Guinea. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. The Smart Start School promotion is back this year. Win yourself one of 1,000 consolation prizes valued at 50 kina each nationwide. And the school with the highest number of valid entries per region will win a 44,000 kina Smart Start school grant. Simply collect three empty packets of Smart Start breakfast biscuits. Put in an envelope with your name, school and number on the envelope and drop in an entry box at a participating school near you. Promo ends on the 22nd of April. Contact us on Facebook to register your school today. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you. 
Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have money more than 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with grain rice. Cut them round in big blue roots logo on top of front and back rice. Now write the name, none of us long be long backside long air. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by exceed 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him more talk savvy. Tell the conditions is start. Remember the joy of playing with your toys as a child? At Morning Plus, we believe that every small business deserves a chance to build and grow. That's why we offer asset financing. Now chance to building something new. To see a different point of view. Mipla Halivim Water belong you. Somara Institute of Leadership and Governance has come a long way on learning and learning from personal relevance to life relevance. It was here that the famous Bulabif Club was born, a key force behind the country's independence and a symbol of national unity. Today, SILAG is given a new mandate by the NEC Policy Decision Number 61 of 2021, a mandate to provide systematic, stable and sustainable public sector training for the public service to systemize and structure a fit for purpose human human capital and institutional development in the National Public Service. SILAG is now pleased to announce that it will be graduating 742 graduates, including 11 serving heads of departments, on the 19th April 2024. So Mare Institute of Leadership and Governance is now preparing to be a special public service university to forge new generation of future ready leaders. People have different views about this situation that we are currently going on. From the IEEC's perspective, these are challenges brought into the, our economy by what has been happening globally. You would have noted that the, the value of the Kina has been sliding since last year. So this is one of the key determinants that also affects import costs of businesses in the country. So what we do is we try to make sure that the prices that business houses charges are not over and above or unnecessarily ripping off our consumers. That's on Monday night. You're watching National MTV News. Preparations are underway for a one-day visit by the Foreign Minister for the People's Republic of China, His Excellency Wang Yi. This week, Foreign Affairs Minister Justin Chechenko confirmed this at a briefing with Chinese Ambassador, His Excellency Mr. Zhang Fanhua. Minister Chechenko said his counterpart, Minister Wang, will arrive in Port Moresby on Saturday. He said the one-day visit is to sign a memorandum of understanding between the government of Papua New Guinea and the People's Republic of China on agriculture and economic cooperation. Meanwhile, Minister Chechenko also announced that there will be a delivery of disaster relief supplies from the Guangdong province in China prior to the arrival of Minister Wang Li's one-day visit. The opening and commissioning of the redeveloped Mendi Airport and the Mendi Munihu District five-year development plan launching has been deferred to the 2nd of May 2024. This announcement comes after a joint press statement released by the Southern Highlands Provincial Government and the Mendi Munihu District Development Authority. The much-anticipated opening of the redeveloped Mendi Airport, as proposed to be opened today on the 18th of April 2024, has not turned out as expected. This is due to safety requirements of lending airlines PNG and other operating airlines at the newly built airport. The opening of the Mendi Airport coincides with the launching of the five-year development plan of Mendi Munihu District. An official announcement was made prior to this. Uh, we have an airport and then we have the Mendi being the capital city, I mean town, and uh, capital of Southern Islands. And we have governor 
who has a lot of interest in Mendy and wants to do a lot of projects there. And the Prime Minister may have some announcements to be made. And then I have, being a local member for Mendy, I have my five-year development plan and my program as well. So we have to put them together and make it a very special program. The airport, in fact, is almost ready, almost 99 Ready. The Southern Highlands Provincial Government and Mendi Munihu District has apologized to the general public for any inconvenience cost. It will take another two weeks for the landing of an aircraft in Mendi in becoming a reality. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. Prime Minister James Marape has fired back at critics over his recent trips overseas to secure investments and find solutions to the recent fuel crisis in the country has been facing. Prime Minister Marape said his trips overseas are centered at finding solutions to issues the country is facing and not for personal reasons. I don't drink, I don't party, I don't do nothing except promoting our country's interests. This company I met in China to come into the, into the country uh, through the president's office. This company I met again in Singapore to come into our country uh, to lobby, to participate, not just to buy a cargo, but also in the downstream sector. Uh, I travel the world to meet company CEOs and world leaders to strike what is good for our national interest. His recent trip to Singapore last month to negotiate and bring in alternate fuel suppliers was heavily criticized by former Petroleum and Energy Minister Karen Gakua and other political commentators. You can talk and yawn and yap on and on, but you cannot do exactly what some of us are doing right now. We as the office I occupy demands advocacy for what is our country's interest. And today it gives us satisfaction that we have biggest Asian oil and gas company in our country right now. It just bumps up very well. The biggest oil nation country in Santos here, the biggest American country in ExxonMobil already here, and the, the lead company right now in the hydrocarbon space, and of course Total. Marape said his recent visit has now brought in the Chinese oil and gas giant PetroChina, and they will now work closely with other existing super majors such as Exxon, Santos and Total Energies to find solutions and work towards downstream processing the country's resources. And with the expertise and the spatial characteristics, the uh, number one company in Asia comes into in the form of PetroChina. Uh, nothing can go wrong in as far as PNGs focus in the hydrocarbon space is concerned. The only thing that can go wrong is ourselves. And now, Edson Kuso, National MTV News. The ousted Medeng Provincial Administrator, Frank Lau, has been arrested by the police fraud squad this afternoon and is currently being detained at the Barocco Police Station. More details surrounding his arrest will be released by police soon. The Asian Development Outlook, disseminated on 17th of April, showed that the economy of Papua New Guinea is expected to improve in 2024 and 2025. This outlook is part of the Asian Development Bank's flagship economic publication for 2024. Growth slowed to 2.0 in 2023 due to decreased production in the resource sector, but the report says PNG's economy is set to grow by 3.3% in 2024 due to resumption of production at the Pogera Gold Mine. ABD country economist Marcel Schroeder elaborates more. In the next two years, uh, ADB expects that uh, especially mining will drive growth. Um, that's mostly because of Polgara's reopening. Um, we expect a resumption of full production later this year at Polgara and uh, a year of full production next year. And um, this will be the main driver of growth um, in these two years. Um, there are also, uh, there's also higher output expected in the other two mines, Octedi and Lihir, in 2025. 
The medium-term outlook for PNG's economy remains positive, with growth in 2025 forecasted to further expand to 4.6 percent. Mr. Schroeder stated while this is the case, there are looming challenges such as foreign exchange restrictions and frequent power disruptions that continue to dampen activity in the rest of the economy, and the fallout from civil unrest on the January 10th also clouds this outlook. Economist Schroeder shared that inflation is expected to rise to 4.5 percent this year, then pick up further to 4.8 in 2025, largely because of continued exchange rate depreciation and the recent civil unrest impact. ABD is hopeful that the foremost business constraint for PNG, foreign exchange restrictions, could ease under a new international monetary fund-led program to be established this year. The reopening of the Pogera gold mine should also create additional operation-related spending on goods and services and employment, as well as provide foreign exchange inflows. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. Bank South Pacific Group CEO Mark Robinson, General Manager Retail Daniel Font, BSP Medang Branch Manager Mary Coy, and her staff handed over a completed project of two study halls and a recreational barbecue hut to Divine World University's Flexible Learning Center recently. The BSP Meren branch manager, Mary Coy, said that the DWU Coronation Campus provides an avenue to many of BSP staff that further their studies through DWU's flexible learning, and BSP was pleased to give back to the campus. Ms. Coy stated the project will strengthen not only the campus community, it will also strengthen the business relationship and more importantly provide an avenue to flexible learning students to have a place for studies and relaxing during school days and over the weekends. Divine Word University Flexible Learning Center coordinator Salote Kaumu thanked BSP on behalf of the university. Mr. Kamu said that this is a dream come true as the flexible learning campus always wanted a study hall for students just like the main campus and now has one. Flexible learning students of Divine Word University's Coronation Campus in Medan now has a additional study facility thanks to BSP Medan Branch's annual community project. BSP's annual community projects continue to focus on health, education and the community throughout Papua New Guinea and the Pacific markets. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. Now we take a look at the NAS foreign market report. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.2559 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2559 US dollars, 0.3949 Australian dollars, 0.2323 Euro, 39.19 Japanese yen. And looking at the commodity prices, at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed higher, copper closed higher, Copper closed lower, palm oil closed unchanged, crude oil is trading higher, copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading higher, the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck. 
like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Be on board this revolution. Introducing our new range of devices and giveaway frenzy. Buy a device and get a free boombox and enjoy 7 days of free streaming to MGEMS. But that's not all. You will also receive 5 gigabytes every month for the next 6 months. That's a whooping 30 gigabytes of data. Don't miss this extraordinary opportunity. Head to your nearest telecom retail outlet to grab one today. Terms and conditions apply. Power Energy Drink. Feel the power. Did you know that at Number One Super, you can access your information online without needing to visit a branch? Receive your balance via SMS within seconds. View your transaction history, housing advance eligibility, beneficiary listing, and download your statement via the NSL mobile app and member portal. For any other query, you can email our call center team. You'll be amazed at how much time you can save. Join the thousands of other Number One Super members getting online. Visit the Number One Super website to get started. Roroco Motors presents the Aizuzu NPR Cargo Truck. Now available for only 140,000 kina. Built for tough terrains and heavy loads, the Aizuzu NPR comes with a 4x2 2022 manual transmission, single cap, right-handed steering, and the maximum performance output of 89 kilowatts. Isuzu NPR Cargo Truck, PNG's number one truck. Visit Baroque Motors today for more information. The stage is set for the women's Isuzu T20 Smash. Round one, Mariners vs. Mudmen, Saturday at 10 a.m. Followed by Black Bears vs. Cassowaries at 2 p.m. Then on Sunday, it's Black Bears vs. Mudmen at 10 a.m. And Mariners vs. Cassowaries at 2 p.m. And on Monday, the Cassowaries take on Mudmen at 10 a.m. And Mariners vs. Black Bears at 2 p.m. The Women's Isuzu T20 Smash. Live only on your number one to watch, MTV. You're watching National MTV News. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is set to attend the Anzac Day dawn service at Isurava Memorial Site along the Kokora War Memorial Track on April 25, 2024. Australians and Papua New Guineans will gather at services and ceremonies around PNG to commemorate the Anzac Day. Foreign Affairs Minister Justin Chachenko in a briefing with the Australian Deputy High Commissioner Dr. Joanne Lauders said Prime Minister Albanese is confirmed to arrive a few days prior to the dawn service. Minister Chachenko revealed that Prime Minister Albanese will be given full respect and honour on his arrival since it will not be an official visit. He said as part of the visit and in respect to the fallen soldiers of the World War II, Prime Minister Albanese and Prime Minister Marape will be walking along certain sections of the Kokoda Trek. Prime Minister Marape will host a state dinner for Prime Minister Albanese at the Parliament House State Function Room prior to his departure to walk the Kokoda Trek to commence and Zag Day. Prime Minister Albanese will be welcomed in traditional Oro style in Isurava, about 83.3 kilometers from Port Mosby, along the Kokoda Trek, where he will meet the local communities led by Governor Gary Jufa. Gladys Killer, National MTV News. As of Tuesday, the 16th of April, 2024, access to Mount William, one of the most iconic tourism destinations in PNG, is now open for access by vehicles after over four weeks of inaccessibility caused by the natural disasters of March 12. 
Local company is Civil mobilized its heavy equipment machines to clear up the debris along the Kundiawa Gambol Road, especially the cutting of a new bypass at Kangri Village, a few kilometers past Gambol Station towards Mount Wilhelm. EC Civil Works Managing Director Emmanuel Kenway said this emergency road clearance is a volunteer initiative and not funded by anyone. However, Ken White thanked the Simbu Provincial Disaster Team, led by the Provincial Administrator John Punde for providing fuel drums for the road clearance from Kawar Market to Gambog Station and to Kangri along the Kundiawa Gambog Mount Willem Road. He also praised the efforts of the provincial governor, Noah Kuhl, and the national government for addressing the recent natural disasters in Simbu. The natural disasters of the 12th of March have severely affected hundreds of farmers, business houses and tourism sites. A local Kangri community leader Stephen Dangir is appreciative of EC Civil Works for creating the new bypass at the Washtawe Kangri Bridge. Gladys Kila, National MTV News. 39 ward councillors of Nipa Kutubu district in the Southern Highlands province have raised the concern over the recent split of new council wards in the district. They have raised these concerns recently in Nipa Kutubu, Southern Highlands province. Frustrated councillors have claimed that the creation of new council wards in the Nipa Basin LLG is unacceptable and causes confusion among the people, especially with the upcoming national census with the local level government elections. Councillor Philip Tegi of Soy Ward 1 in the Upper Nipa LLG stated that the councillors are appealing to local member and Minister for Defence Dr. Billy Joseph to thoroughly explain the creation of new council wards to them. They are appealing to Minister for Provincial and Local Level Government Affairs Soroy Ewe and Prime Minister James Marape to intervene in the creation of new wards brought forward. Meanwhile, attempts to get comments from the member for Nipa Kutubu, Dr. Billy Joseph, was unsuccessful. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. Eminent Envoy and Friends League Incorporation officially held its launching of its league and club today at the Gateway Hotel in the nation's capital. Governor General Sir Bob Dadai was the guest of honor to officiate the launch. Chairman and senior fellow ambassador Brian Yobon Copio, in his opening remarks, gave a brief insight on what the league is about and the club they have formed. Thank you for coming here to join us to launch the Papua New Guinea, or rather imminent, Envoys and Friends League. How it started, we thought that there was a professional body required to discuss issues, questions and concerns which are affecting Papua New Guinea in this contemporary game of politics. We need an independent body like this to speak on issues without any fear and favor. So that's how we have established it this organization will be focusing on issues affecting Papua New Guinea on economic, political, social, security, uh, environmental, and so on. And these topical issues, any topical issues will be discussed at the forum which uh, the MCS briefly mentioned, the William Club. 
Governor General Grand Chief S. Bob Dadai stated he was honored to officiate the launching of the Eminent Envoys and Friends League that allows and provides a platform for academics, professionals in corporate and professional organizations to stimulate ideas and an interest of creating innovative ideas. It is also hoped that the League and William Club be regarded as a major force in redirecting and enhancing the destiny of Papua New Guinea through enhancing of the minds and aspirations of our leaders and forefathers who connected minds and created our young nation. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. They're gold nuggets. There's a flavor for everyone. The best tasting snack. Get a burst of gold nuggets. Cheese flavor. Mega wow. Chicken flavor. Mega wow. Cheese onion flavor. Mega wow. Barbecue flavor. Mega wow. When you're on the go. One more. One more. Get that burst of gold nuggets flavor. Mega wow. Samara Institute of Leadership and Governance has come a long way on learning and learning from personal relevance to life relevance. It was here that the famous Bulabif Club was born, a key force behind the country's independence and a symbol of national unity. Today, SILAG is given a new mandate by the NEC policy decision number 61 of 2021, a mandate to provide systematic, stable and sustainable public sector training for the public service to systemize and structure a fit-for-purpose human human capital and institutional development in the national public service. SILAG is now pleased to announce that it will be graduating 742 graduates, including 11 serving heads of departments on the 19th April 2024. Somare Institute of Leadership and Governance is now preparing to be a special public service university to forge new generation of future ready leaders. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots medium grain rice. Cut them round in big blue roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name, none of us long be long backside long air. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner bikes in 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page long kissing more talk save. Tabs the conditions is start. Do you have what it takes? You think you could charge look up next time or walk with Bring on 2024. We're still looking for the best singer yet. This year, Vocal Fusion is coming to you bigger, brighter, drama, baby. Vocal Fusion 2024, we are looking forward to seeing you all this year. So bring on 2024, we want to see you there. Southern Fusion from Masse, Islands in the New Guinea Islands. You know, go what it takes, looking for your auditions. And for all those places where we have never been before, you get your auditions in so we can find the best singer in Papua New Guinea. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. 
Successfully ending the men's Isuzu T20 Smash competition grand final last weekend, Cricket PNG is set to kick off the women's competition this weekend at the Amini Park in Port Moresby. The AFL PNG development will host the 2024 Southern Region School Carnival at Mary Barracks Oval this weekend. Successfully running several development programs include Super Kick, Smart Start and Open Carnival in Port Mosby, the Southern Region AFL PNG team continues to embark on the journey meeting everyday targets in line with the program. AFL PNG Southern Region Development Manager David Topeni told Trukai Sports today that his team is set to host the school carnival this weekend. Topeni confirmed that more than 10 schools with over 500 students will participate in the school carnival. He further stated that the games will include both male and female teams playing under different age categories. Topeni also said that the team is currently visiting schools doing registrations in preparations for the carnival. Jonathan Sibona, Trukai Sports. The Money Plus Port Mosby AFL will head into the second game of its round one competition this weekend. Last weekend match in the men's senior division saw Gerica Bomas defeated Concept Kobonis 54-39 while TSI Lamana Dokas beat Alawana Swans 87-27. Gero Macbys also took out Bomana Cats by 93 points to 1 and West Eagle 67 defeated University Tigers to 12 points. In the men's reserve division, so Garika won against Concept Kobonis 34 to 12 points and TSI Lamana Dokas beat Alawana Swans by 42 points. Also in the women's division, Concept Kobonis 25 defeated Lamana Dokas to 20 points while Gero Macbys 43 to 7 points. Jonathan Sibona, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Share the love with Gala Ice Cream. Gala Cone Ice Creams. Gala Stick Ice Creams. And Gala Classic Tub Ice Creams. Happiness begins with the Gala range of fun flavors which create taste adventures and excitement with every bite. Treat yourself. Share with a friend while chilling. The whole family will enjoy. Everyone has their favorite. Which one is yours? Share the love with Gala Ice Creams. Gala Gala Yum. Somara Institute of Leadership and Governance has come a long way on learning and learning from personal relevance to life relevance. It was here that the famous Bully Beef Club was born, a key force behind the country's independence and a symbol of national unity. Today, SILAG is given a new mandate by the NEC policy decision number 61 of 2021, a mandate to provide systematic, stable and sustainable public sector training for the public service to systemize and structure a fit for purpose human human capital and institutional development in the National Public Service. SILAG is now pleased to announce that it will be graduating 742 graduates, including 11 serving heads of departments, on the 19th April 2024. So Mare Institute of Leadership and Governance is now preparing to be a special public service university to forge new generation of future ready leaders. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Mama Swantem Telecom's Gupla Mobile Data Plans. With eight exclusive mobile data plans to choose from, select a plan that best suits your budget. You can purchase a plan for as low as 3 Kina for 1 gigabyte of data valid for 24 hours. Or receive 130 gigabyte of data valid for 30 days for only 150 Kina. 
Telecom. Connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Hi, I'm Belinda Koyati. Join me weekly 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights on House and Home as we talk pet care, home improvement ideas, DIY projects, pick a book discussions, and hard work man. That's House and Home 7 p.m. Tuesday nights only on your number one to watch MTV. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round in big the roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name, none of us long you long backside long app. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by exceed 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page long kissing more talk seven. Terms the conditions is tough. You're watching True Kai Sports. Moving to overseas sports, Sam Walker from the Sydney Roosters has been ruled out in tonight's NRL match against the Storms when he failed to pass concussion protocols in training during the week. Walker tried to train during the week but failed to pass concussion protocols. The Roosters will be boosted by the return of James Tedesco after his time on the sidelines also due to concussions. Uh, in the Storm camp, Nelson Asafa Solomano, he comes in uh, for the first game of the season. In AFL, Jeremy Finlaten has expressed frustration over his three-match suspension by the AFL judiciary. He's clarified some comments that he's made uh, expressing frustration over his three-match suspension. Uh, the AFL sidelined him for making a homophobic slur against uh, Essendon in round four. Uh, he said uh, he's, uh, quote, pissed off that uh, he has had to uh, sit out uh, three weeks. The National Swimming Championships tournament held in Australia had seen a 16-year-old swimming record being broken last night. 22-year-old touched the wall in just under two minutes and seven seconds at the national champs. It was just four one thousandths of a second quicker than the time set by Steph Rice in 2009. The record sends a strong message to her international competitors heading into the Paris Olympics. That ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. Buy more, win more, one time roots rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round and pick the roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name, none of us long you long backside long app. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by exceed 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him more talk save. Terms the conditions is tough. Top up now with Telecom's Good Pa More Bundles. Subscribe to any of Telecom's More Bundle plans, ranging from 3 kina to 75 kina to enjoy unlimited on-net calls. More SMS, more data with increased off-net minutes. Choose from 8 exclusive plans, packed with more value to experience seamless communication with your family and friends. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Somara Institute of Leadership and Governance has come a long way on learning and learning from personal relevance to life relevance. It was here that the famous Bulabif Club was born, a key force behind the country's independence and a symbol of national unity. Today, SILAG is given a new mandate by the NEC policy decision number 61 of 2021, a mandate to provide systematic, stable and sustainable public sector training for the public service to systemize and structure a fit for purpose human capital and institutional development in the national public service. SILAG is now pleased to announce that it will be graduating 742 graduates, including 11 serving heads of departments on the 19th April 2024. So Mare Institute of Leadership and Governance is now preparing to be a special public service university to forge new generation of future ready leaders.
The stage is set for the women's Isuzu T20 Smash. Round 1, Mariners vs. Mudmen, Saturday at 10 a.m., followed by Black Bears vs. Cassowaries at 2 p.m. Then on Sunday, it's Black Bears vs. Mudmen at 10 a.m. and Mariners vs. Cassowaries at 2 p.m. And on Monday, the Cassowaries take on Mudmen at 10 a.m. and Mariners vs. Black Bears at 2 p.m. The Women's Isuzu T20 Smash, live only on your number one to watch, MTV. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours. For the southern region, Port Mosby City, showers and possible thunderstorm. Daru, partly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorm. Kerama, rain showers and possible thunderstorm. Alota, some showers and possible thunderstorms. Popondeta, few showers and possible thunderstorms. To the Momase region, Lay City, partly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorm. Medeng, partly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorm. We wake some showers with possible thunderstorm. Vanimo, few showers and possible thunderstorm. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengao, few showers and possible thunderstorms. Kavieng, few showers. Kokopon Rabaul, partly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorm. Kimbe, partly cloudy with rain showers and possible thunderstorm. Buka, few showers and possible thunderstorm. To the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, partly cloudy with rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Goroka, Bans and Kundiawa, some rain showers and possible thunderstorm. Mendi, Tari and Wabiga, some rain showers and possible thunderstorm. Looking at the small ships forecast, waters of southern Pinji Indonesian border to Daru, seas 1 to 2 meters. Waters of Kiwai Islands to Kerama to Yule Island to Hood Point to Samari Islands, seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel and all Millen Bay Islands sees 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Cape Vogel to Huan Gao to Finchafen sees 0.5 to 1 meters. Waters of Finchafen through VTS Strait to CRC Long Islands sees 0.5 to 1 meters. Waters of Long Island to Medang to Wewek to Vanimo and Northern Pinji Indonesian border sees 0.5 to 1 meters. Waters of Manus and its western Gubul Islands sees 0.5 to 1 meters. Waters of New Island to East New Britain to West New Britain sees 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Bougainville sees 0.5 to 1 meters. Looking at the ocean forecast, coral seas sea slight to moderate, northeast to southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots. Solomon seas sea smooth, northeast to northwest winds of 5 to 15 knots. Bismarck seas sea smooth, north to northeast winds of 5 to 10 knots. Pacific Ocean sea smooth, east to northeast winds of 5 to 10 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you, always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Thursday, the 18th of April, 2024. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits.